Hello my dear friends, let's ask ourselves what the ideal size for the capsular rexes should be. Many surgeons who perform flux would like this figure to be around 5 to 5.1 millimeters and some would even prefer a sub 5 millimeter rexes especially if they are implanting a premium intraocular lens and if the cataract is not too hard they would tend to perform a capsular rexus size of about 4.8 millimeters. This size of rexes would allow for a nice 360 degree overlap of the optic of the IOL. And the study has also shown that in cases of rexes that is between 3.9 to 4.9 millimeters, the incidence of PCO is much lower than if it was between 5 to 5.9 millimeters. Now for those of us who are used to working with a 5.5 to 5.75 millimeter rexes, we need to make certain small modifications if you're going to perform FACO through a smaller size capsular rexus. In the following case, I attempted to make a 5.1 mm rexus. However, I ended up with a slightly smaller, a sub 5 mm capsular rexus. Let me show you how I handled the case and what modifications I had to adopt in order to complete the case successfully. In this patient, the pupil size was only around 6 mm, so I tried to use the pupil as a template in order to create my 5 to 5.1 millimeter capsular rexus. With the help of a cystotome, I make the initial central puncture and create a C flap. I'm doing this very cautiously and I'm trying to keep the edge of the capsular rexus just about 0.5 millimeters running parallel to the pupillary margin and trying to keep it central as well as round. I managed to get a successfully well-centered and round capsular rexus. However, it became a little smaller than 5 millimeters. Maybe it is just between 4.5 to 4.9 millimeters. This is also an ideal size to perform FACO. Cortical cleavage hydrodissection is done and while doing so, I detected that the central nucleus rose up, but the fluid was tending to get trapped behind Therefore, I gently rotated the nucleus in order to prevent a capsular block. Now, when you're handling a FACO emulsification through a 4.9 millimeter capsular rexus, make sure that you carry the maneuvers within the capsular rexus margin and you do not stray extremely to the periphery, in which case you may end up slicing the edge of the capsular rexus. So I am doing a direct phaco chop technique. This is a grade 2 nucleosclerotic cataract. In a harder cataract, you probably need to go to a 5.5 mm rexus because a small rexus will definitely hamper your ability to create the chop and to mobilize the fragment. You see that I am creating multiple small fragments. Even though it is just a grade 2, I am not making just 4 quadrants. Because of the ballooning of the conjunctiva, I come out and I make a small nick in the conjunctiva to prevent this ballooning from progressing during the phaco emulsification. At this point I also, because I finished cracking up the nucleus, I also switched from a chopper to a Sinsky hook. I'm staying very much in the center of the eye. I use the phaco probe to attract the pieces to the tip and remove one fragment at a time. Now these are small fragments and they can be easily mobilized through a smaller size capsular rexus. It's easy to impale and hold on to a nucleus fragment by just directing the bevel of the phaco probe towards the fragment. Just by turning the bevel towards the piece, the vacuum will cause the piece to rise up and hold on. Make sure that the fragment separation is complete and the fragments are individually separated otherwise you will not be able to mobilize. Of course you can also rotate it downwards and pick it up from 6 o'clock position. Gentle phaco emulsification is done. Probe is always kept in the center of the eye. None of the instruments stray to the periphery. They stay within the central 4 to 4.5 millimeters within the capsular rexus edge. The impaling of the pieces and the small size fragments can easily be mobilized through this size of capsular rexus. The epinucleus is also removed with the phaco probe itself. Just use vacuum, make sure you don't use phaco power. 
just with a little amount of vacuum you can attract the epinucleus and remove all of it from within the capsular bag. So this is the nucleus management that is completed through a sub 5 millimeter capsular axis. I turn on the retroglow. cortical aspiration using my coaxial IA probe. The cortical aspiration also is quite easy because you have done a good cortical cleavage hydrodissection. However, through the smaller size capsular rexes, it is probably better to use a bimanual IA because you can access the different parts of the eye more easily by interchanging your hands. But since I am so used to the coaxial IA, I expose the tip a little longer and also because I have an angled coaxial probe, I am able to access even the subincisional area quite easily. Now while inserting the intraocular lens through the sub 5 mm capsular axis, make sure that you try to get the lens, at least the leading haptic, into the bag because you don't want too much of manipulation by putting it in the sulcus and then putting it in the bag. But in this case, the entire lens was delivered directly into the capsular bag. Try to keep the manipulations quite gentle because if you were to roughly push the optic downwards in a smaller size rexus, you could create a sonal dialysis. The viscoelastic is washed out from the anterior chamber and from behind the intraocular lens keep the bag empty so you don't get a capsular block syndrome postoperatively which has a higher incidence when you have a smaller size capsular excess. So make sure you remove all the viscoelastic. Now you see how beautifully the intraocular lens is centered and you have a rexis that's completely overlapping the IOL. This is definitely give a good predictable refractive outcome and also reduce the incidence of posterior capsular pacification. I thank you for your attention.